Hi guys, James here. Thank you for coming to watch. And today is the next episode in the Finding My Tone series. Um, and I thought actually uh, today we might discuss um, using no pedals. So, so far we've talked about always on pedals. We've talked about creating a sort of ambient sound. And ironically, I've actually put together a pedal board now for the first time in a long time. Um, and that's something I want to show you. Probably in the next video, I'll take you through this first version of the pedal board. I'm calling it 1.0. Um, not very original, but you know, this is a collection of probably my current favorite pedals or ones that I'm just testing out a lot at the moment. To me, um, fuzz is the area where you can really, really create an identity, I think, personally. Uh, so I'm playing between about three different fuzz pedals at the moment. But today is really a test of amp versus pedal. Now, when we use a pedal, we're trying to recreate an amp sound. We're trying to recreate that amp overdrive, those pushed tubes, that lovely breakup. But does it make sense if you've got a great amp to actually use pedals um, and why would you use them? So I thought we'd just do a little sort of play around today, really. Uh, so what I've done is I've set up the two two rocks, the classic reverb, the Bloomfield Drive, I've set them up in their more aggressive sort of modes. So the Two Rock Classic Reverb Signature has three different gain structures. It has one that's a bit like a black face Fender amp. Uh, that's in the down position. The up position is the Two Rock sound. And then in the middle position is, uh, so Matt Schofield, a great blues player, he had his own signature amp, which had a bit more output. Um, and this middle mode is supposed to be like that, but even more than the Matt Schofield signature. So I've set it in that position. We've got the FET gain on past midday. So when it's at midday, it's sort of neutral and you can take away and you can inc increase. A FET is like a, an increased resistance circuit. So essentially you're allowing more or less in. Uh, it's a bit complicated. I don't really understand it, but, but it's great. <laughs> and then I've got both amps on bypass mode. Bypass mode bypasses the tone stack and it also just gives, again, it just gives more, more sort of gain, more output. Um, and with the Bloomfield Drive, I've got it in the lead setting today. Um, as I said, bypass EQ2 on both amps. EQ2 is the more full EQ. Um, I'm wondering if you're bypassing the tone stack, is it still using that EQ somehow? I'll, I'll figure that out. <laughs> so what I'll do today is I'll just show you what this sounds like on the strap. And then I've got my ES355 here. Um, and then we'll, we'll put the, the, amp, the amps back in their sort of more clean setting that I normally use for pedals. And then we'll use pedals. Sorry, I think my cats might have just knocked something over in the background. Um, so here we go. This is what we sound like today. Let's just start with the, the volume down a little bit. And up. Oh, I should say, sorry, I'm playing through just the classic reverb to start. We'll kick over to the Bloomfield in a sec, and then we'll go for both, so. You can hear, probably, that I've got the bright switch on, basically, the equivalent for Two Rocks bright switch. Uh, without that. Today, I don't always use a bright switch, in fact, mostly I don't. I just fancy that really bright feeling. Which is great. It really reminds me of a vintage Fender sound, actually. And then we've got the Bloomfield Drive over, which I haven't got the bright switch on. So I wanted, when you put two amps together, you don't want them to be exactly the same. And you really can set the Bloomfield and the Classic Reverb to be pretty similar. Um, I mean, you know, the ethos is all two rock. It's got that same sort of sound, um, even though they, you can tweak them to be completely different. So oh, that is epic. <laughs> So, classic reverb, 
Bloomfield Road. <laughs> When you put them together, and that is totally uh, sort of dynamic with your volume volume control. Now, if I go back to um, so, if I go back to not having that treble, you'll hear quite a difference. So there, you can hear that treble switch actually makes a huge difference in the way it's set up. At the moment, um, it really changes the whole dynamic whether you've got that in or not. Let's just have a quick playthrough with the 355. <laughs> right. Um, let's go for the classic reverb with the bright switch on again. together. I've just got to uh, be a bit careful with the volume, I'm clipping the mic, so I'll keep it rolled back a bit. So uh, my first thought is actually this is much more of a strap sound to me, this whole setup. So we're going to go back to the strap for the rest of this video. But let's focus on this question, amp versus pedal, because, you know, it's part of the, the hobby, the passion, the love of, of playing the guitar is all the gear. And clearly we can't afford to buy a new guitar or amp every week uh, or every month or every few months, but we can afford to buy a pedal probably every so often. And so it becomes a great fun thing to do. And I'm in a privileged position here sitting in front of two two rocks. So I don't want this to sound um, po-faced, let's say. You know, you can get the tones you're after from a lot of amps. Um, if, you're, if you've got the most basic beginner amps, which is where we all started, I had a, uh, a solid state, tiny little Marshall thing for about 10 years. That's all I played through um, from the age of 10, well, 10 to about 17 or 18. That's all I played through, uh, and I had a pod. You remember those red pods, um, which was great. Um, and, and you know, you might need a bit of help there. And if you're playing types of music where you need massive gain and all that, there are amps for that as well. Um, but the key thing for me is that I can get the tone I'm trying to get just with the guitar and the amp. <laughs> That sound is absolutely the sort of sound I've been trying to get for for a certain style of playing. It's the sort of Hendrixy, Stevie Ray Vaughan, clean blues, if that makes sense. It's not clean, is it? But it's it's like that. Um... It's the st 
Strat sound that I'm after. That's what I'm getting right now. And I think it is quite different. The Strat is such a personality of its own and it deserves, in my eyes, within my rig, it deserves to have its own complete setup. And I think... Uh, there you go. That's uh, that, how the amps sound. What I'm gonna quickly do is very lo-fi today. I'm just gonna use my phone to take a little clip of both the settings, put them up on the screen so you can see as well. Um, Uh, that's as much my own memory as, as to show you guys. Uh, I often find that I'm finding great settings and then I lose it somehow. So, um, right, I'm just going to put these back in their normal cleanish modes. Let's just hear that. I mean, that's very nice. Um, and that's the classic reverb put them back together right what we've got down here today the duelist pedal uh which has the string singer and the heavy hand side i think this is the only pedal we need to test for this today keep it straightforward and focused this is a pedal that is being used around the internet by so many people um and i love it Let's start with the tube screamer side. That's what I would imagine is the sort of sound that I was getting. So without and with. Okay, I wanna dial in what I think of as being a broken up tube sound with a bit of edge, which is what we were getting and enough volume boost to get that great loud punchy sound. But I don't want this to sound at all processed and driven. So. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I think I might have just uh, just sold this in one in one go. Right. <laughs> um, I want to put this on the glass setting because I had the uh, bright switch on. getting close to that sound that these amps had when I put them together earlier which is fantastic because first thing is uh, if I was gigging then I wouldn't always take my two rocks would I um, you know if there's any number of amps or you might not take an amp you just use what you find there let's say you're going to a to a gig where you're just playing a couple of tracks you know one of those nights uh, you might not want to take your whole rig you just find out there's a hot rod deluxe or whatever maybe we can get it from this pedal I want to turn the gain down um, I'll take a picture just of the final setting once we're happy with what we've got. So. Remember with that. And if we just go one amp at a time, this is classic reverb. Bloomfield. Ah, my theory is that the duelist can do a great sound like the classic reverb does, uh, but actually the Bloomfield sounded better when it was without the pedal, which is interesting. Um, When you put them together, I feel like the dominant sound, even though they're at the same volume, is coming from that side. It just seems to suit this sort of thing. 
let's go to the heavy hand side. I wonder if that's going to be more like the Bloomfield Drive sound that I like. So again, without. And on. Which is great. And then uh, let's do classic reverb. And then Bloomfield. Just pushing the volume so it's the same as the string singer side was. Classic reverb. string singer both amps <laughs> yeah i found uh, i found the sound i've been looking for all year I can't believe it's taken me this long to just get the, the tweak everything the right way. This is that Stevie Ray Vaughan sound that I've been wanting. It's funny with Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff, and I've heard this from other people. You can try and learn the pieces, which I find incredibly difficult. Uh, his technique and his personality is so involved in all of that, and I'm just not very good at the shuffle. I'm still practicing. I don't try and play it on the videos yet. It's just not worth it. Um, uh, but until you get his tone, people feel really despondent. Like, yeah, they might learn how to play a bit like some of his tracks. And I'm not talking about the Lenny sort of stuff. I'm talking about the, the more Texas blues sort of stuff. Once you get the sound, then the mode, I think you'll get the mojo. And now, you know, sitting there with that sound, trying to play it, um, will just sort of up it to the next level and allow me to feel more confident, which is great. But the question was today, amp versus pedal for this particular sound. I've got to say, they're both doing an equally great job. Given the choice, I would have the amp set up the way I did the first time round, so I didn't need the pedal. I think it sounded five, ten percent better than the pedal. With the pedal on, you can just, when you're in the room, you know, YouTube compression is not going to help this. When you're in the room, you can feel very perfectly organic with just the amps and the punch and the clarity and everything is great. When you put on the pedal, even with such minimal gain, and I'll just take this picture so you can see how I ended up on both sides of this pedal. Um, uh, I can just hear that element of, okay, it's being it's put through a pedal. Uh, now I know it's there, it's not a blind test, so, you know, that's not uh, exactly scientific. But let's say I didn't have the sort of amp that I could push into the, the first sound that I got out of these, then this pedal would be fantastic. Um, I think um, last couple of weeks I've only been playing through the two rocks. I mean, who wouldn't, obviously. Uh, so maybe from next week I'll go back to using an assortment of different amps because it's a little bit unfair. I know not many people can get their hands on a two rock. Um, <laughs> there's only uh, so many times I can sort of um, apologise <laughs> for that. Uh, you know, I love it. Uh, I love having them here. So yeah, if you've got a good, clean sounding amp, certainly with some good headroom, um, and I'd say anything above 20 watts really is giving you good headroom, on my 15 watt Vox, I struggle to get to get that sort of headroom, but um, the, the Duelist pedal and other pedals like that will get you so close to the sound you're after. Um, whereas you have to have particular types of amps, you have to have the ability to play them at a decent level of volume. I mean, you can see I've got them attenuated anyway. Not massively. Um, this one is, oh, well, minus 15 dB and that one is notched back one setting but it's a, it's a less powerful amp. So they're coming out at the same volume. It's pretty loud. I wouldn't play like this all day, you know, in a decent sized room. My neighbors are very nice, they don't complain, but I still wouldn't play like that, that, that volume all day. It wouldn't be fair on other people. So, you know, it's pretty loud. So to get that sort of sound out of your amp, you are gonna have to push it somewhat. And there's only so much you can attenuate before you reduce the quality of that tone and sound. And that's where the pedal comes in. 
And I think that's the purpose of it, isn't it? It's to give you those sounds that you can get from an amp in a lot of cases, um, but not from every amp. Not every amp is going to give you the ability to sound like a tube screamer and to sound like a clon and to sound like, you know, a tweed deluxe, like it's got fuzz coming out of it because it's pushing the transformer and the speaker so much. Um, so pedals certainly have a place and we'll carry on with the pedals next week. I just wanted to show you um, that in many cases, we're just trying to find an analog of what an amp itself can already do, as long as you've got the ability to push it to that level and that volume and everything like that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tone today. I certainly did. I just think um, the amp by itself sounded absolutely incredible. Um, as I, I've taken a little clip of that because I want to remember for myself that those are the settings that give me that I'd say it's that really pushed blackface Fender, but on steroids and with a little something different with the Bloomfield coming in behind it, a bit more of a Dumble-esque sort of sound. Uh, just, that's blown me away this morning. And I hope it comes across on the video and that you've enjoyed it. But for this week, that was finding my tone. I've certainly found a great tone to carry on with for the rest of this week. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more of this series, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Cheers.